Does your dog behave a certain way because of its genetics? Hi everyone, welcome to Answers News for Monday, May 16th, 2022. Hi, I'm Bodie Hodge. I'm with Dr. Gabriella Haynes and with Rob Webb. Uh, before we dive into dog genetics, let's take a look at something that just will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, this is down in Texas. Uh, district's graduating class features 35 pairs of twins, one set of triplets. Wow. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, like, what they have in the water. They, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. What do they have right? in the water? That's what, a good question. What do they have in the water? Oh, my. They're obviously yeah. seeing a lot of double vision here. <laughs> Doubles everywhere. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? That's right. Right. Uh, you know, it's Families a, it, and everything. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, this that's comes really from, cool. Oh, sorry. This comes from UPI. Uh, what's interesting, though, is they point out that the place that still holds the Guinness Book of World Records from back in 2017 was in Illinois. Yeah. Hmm. 45 sets of twins and one sets. set of triplets. Yes. How about wow. that? Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's really yeah. cool. Do you oh, have any mom. twins in the audience here today? No. Ooh. Oh, yeah? We got one yeah. there. That's right. cool. Yeah. Very cool. That's really neat. Yeah, I grew up with some twins, you know, there in my little county, and my older brother married a twin, so it's oh, kind of neat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so that's my baseball team twins. twins but, uh, that was yeah. Illinois, but not there. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know what's in that water there, but yeah, uh, that's cool. pretty Seriously. neat. All right, let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, genetics goes to the dogs, finds there's not much to breed behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you, what do you, what's your take on this? Anybody who wants to start? Well, I, I didn't read this one. I'm afraid of dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love dogs. Dog, I'm dogs afraid of awesome. dogs. If this is this is about yeah. cats, I probably would have threw it out. But no, don't do that. Dogs, no, I'm, I'm no, it, I like but, cats. Oh yeah, I'm I mean, afraid of dogs. All, all, all the way through it, you know. There's it's it's very interesting research here, but they're of course of course they're talking about Darwin, of course, and trying to link it to some kind of Darwinian. I just thought, you know, this, this is a Darwinian dogma they're trying to rely on <laughs> dogma uh, yeah. research okay. is they even call Dar darwin arc right yeah. the project yeah. which is totally against the whole idea of uh, of darwin of he, he wanted some species to go mm -hmm. um extinct and of course that's what evolution requires evolution right. requires that some ex uh, species go extinct some group of people yeah. actually go extinct uh if you want to yeah, talk a little bit about yeah, Darwin, he did. He really mm -hmm. talked about that kind of stuff. He, he wanted things to get out of the way right. uh, so that things could evolve uh, a little bit further. And he went mm -hmm. so far as to say he wanted certain people groups right. exterminated. If you weren't a Absolutely. Caucasian, he wanted you exterminated, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he says that in his book, uh, The Descent of Man, uh, which came out in 1871, as well as a number of animals, you know, all the way down, gorillas, chimp. He, he wanted all those exterminated, essentially. Um, so it's funny when they use this name, Darwin's Ark, yeah, it's like, I was like ah. well, that's yeah. kind of oxymoronic uh, when you <laughs> yeah. think about that. Yeah. But yeah, this is a study on a bunch of dogs and their behaviors, and they actually put this out to the public so a lot of people mm -hmm. could uh, report on what type of dog they had, and they had a whole bunch of different questions uh, about the dog's behavior, mm -hmm. and so then they started g gathering uh, research based on pure breeds versus mutts. And yeah, they had examples like things. golden retrievers have a reputation for being very friendly dogs, which I had the golden retriever growing up, and it was probably the best dog I ever had, super friendly to mm -hmm. everyone, but they're saying, you know, you can't always rely on the genetics, of course, and there's different, ver there's different mm -hmm. factors they have to kind of think about in terms of these things. It was good for me to read this because I every time I see a dog, I don't see anything like that being friendly or, you know, <laughs> every time people say like, oh, this dog is so friends, like, what is it that thing inside of its mouth? Mm -hmm. That's not coconut. Yeah. It's teeth. <laughs> so this so thing so has... I've only been bit by four or five dogs. Really? Yeah. Maybe, oh my goodness. Six. I'd be curious if they did any research on like small dogs like chihuahuas because those things are nasty they they, they bite you <laughs> not non-stuff <laughs> ankle yeah. biters is what i call them yeah. so i'd be oh. curious on that one yeah but yeah this whole research is really rough but no i mean they, they were really trying to do a connection between right. the genetics you know the specific genetics within the dog kind to see if there were certain behaviors would come mm -hmm. out of that. Mm -hmm. and really their conclusion was there's so, so many exceptions to it that, right i mean you get some generalities but not necessarily there's a lot of ex exceptions yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that said in here that caught my eye, 90% of greyhounds, for example, don't seem to bury their toys, but three of them frequently did. <laughs> and, you know, so, but, but what hit me was, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at Proverbs 30, verse 31, greyhounds are mentioned. Mm -hmm. And, That's you know, really cool. I, I know there's some people say, oh, well, no, 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 greyhounds are, came later on. You know, they were a Celtic dog and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But uh, they actually were an ancient dog. There's a lot of variations of these greyhounds. You have a Spanish greyhound, a Celtic greyhound. And uh, something that I didn't realize is in some of the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, 
there's an image of Cleopatra with some greyhounds. Oh, that's cool. So really, cool. it goes to show it's an ancient dog breed. You uh -huh. know, mm -hmm. most of the dog breeds we have today, over 200 or so, um, they all arrive really within the last couple hundred years. Uh, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's 200. I can't, somebody yeah, has like check my number on it. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. that's right. cool. Yeah, something like that. But um, yeah, yeah, kind of neat. Uh, I actually enjoyed reading some of this research, but. Uh, definitely have to be very careful of some mm -hmm. of the interpretations on some right. of that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I would also be curious if one of the questions had to do with, did these dogs raise up with other dogs of that type that had already been trained to do mm. something? Well, because that changed mm -hmm. a lot. Right. Yeah. Um, because mm -hmm. the way that they're raised and the way they've been trained might mm -hmm. affect some of their behavior right. as opposed mm -hmm. to just their genetics. So, you know, I think there's maybe yeah. more behind yeah. that. Uh, you know, I couldn't tell you more unless I read yeah. the original research report. Right. But, uh, yeah, cool. kind of neat. All yeah. right, this next one comes from phys.org. How the dinosaur extinction changed plant evolution. Again, they have to have evolution they have right to. Yep. there, right? Well, they're just trying to talk here about the dinosaur mm -hmm. extinction and how the, mm -hmm. the plants change, which now it's a logical fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're trying to use the word uh, change for evolution, which is not yeah, the what they mean. Yeah, equivocate on the word evolution Equivocation a yep. uh, fallacy <laughs> yep. right here. And they use some See terms like non-flying dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Of course, because of evolution influence now, a mm -hmm. dinosaur can be non-flying dinosaurs and flying dinosaurs, which bird for them now, it's a, it's a dinosaur. So if anyone had yeah. birds in your house, now you are raising a dinosaur. Isn't that yeah. crazy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In their worldview, you know, it's evolution, evolutionary worldview right yeah. there. Um, how, do, how do you feel about Chick-fil-A? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fried dinosaur, Dino fried yeah. chicken, you know. Dinosaur, yeah. But the thing is, you go, go back and start with the Bible. God created birds on day five. <laughs> Flying and sea creatures were made on day five. Dinosaurs are land animals. They're made on day six. That's mm -hmm. right. So they're actually yeah. not related by yeah. any means. Yeah, and which is funny, it's in their worldview, dinosaurs come first and birds come after that, right? Mm -hmm. And the biblical uh, worldview is the opposite. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So it's not only different, it's just totally the opposite. That's one of the reasons why, uh -huh. another reason why you cannot, tr you can't, you, you, you can try to, but you're not going to go anywhere, try to mix uh, Bible with evolution. You yeah. know, it doesn't go anywhere That's because right. they're totally the opposite. Right. That was dynamite. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> dynamite. Oh, uh, my. Uh, I feel like my puns just get worse and worse as <laughs> it goes on. But yeah, what I, what I thought was interesting though, anytime you're reading an article and you want to see basically what the bias of an author is, always go to the last paragraph and look to see what the last paragraph actually says. And it says here, this loss can affect important ecosystem functions and processes such as speed, uh, seed dispersal or herbivory, uh, the ongoing extinction of large animals due to human hunting and climate change. So right there, there's the bias. They're trying to spin it towards this climate right. change kind of hysteria mm -hmm. right there, you know, and try, you know, basically always trying to look, look for a way to basically blame humans for the environment, blame, hum blame any, anything they mm -hmm. can uh, to basically kind of propagate this kind of... Um, uh, we we cover we cover one paper here. Just remind me that that they were saying that the reason why we don't see aliens anymore is because of climate change. Yeah, climate change is the answer to everything. Basically yeah, I remember to. that, and I was like, goodness sake, yeah. just like everything is climate change. Yeah. 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 yeah basically, I should re just remind us of Romans one. They worship and serve the the creature, the creation, rather than the creator, creator. because we're all yeah. going to worship something, right? Right. We're made in the image right. of God. We were made to worship something. So if we're not putting our time our money, our effort into the one that created everything around us, we're going to be worshiping something that he has created. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, a lot of these climate change kind of hysterians out there, they're worshiping yeah. the earth, which God created rather mm -hmm. than the one that created mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's so. funny. You look at this and it, it's, notice the image, mm -hmm. you know, you got the <laughs> coming out of the yeah. sky, whoosh, yeah. you know, and yeah. those dinosaurs, Hey, what's that? <laughs> what? What? Uh, you know, you, you got to think of the story though. There's the secular story, the right. secular story of long, slow, gradual changes over millions mm -hmm. of years, no major catastrophes. Oh wait, this is a major catastrophe. Uh -oh. uh, oops. Um, so, you know, there, there's those conflicts, you know, mm -hmm. you can't have a global flood in this, but you can have something like this. Right. Um, so you, you got to understand that's the double standard. That's being mm -hmm. judgmental. Yeah. Uh, on Very this. inconsistent you know, in everything 
They yeah. do. When we start with the Bible, it makes sense of the rock right. layers. It makes sense of the vast majority of those rock layers are, are from the flood of Noah's day. Mm-hmm. Yes, we find birds buried in there. We find dinosaurs right. buried. That's, that's and what we expect. And sometimes in the it's same layers. Sediment, you know? In the same layers. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's just incredible when you look at mm-hmm. that. But yeah, I want to encourage people to think biblically about right. that. Absolutely. It comes down All right. Uh, we got another one here on dinosaurs. Yay. Uh, at least org. some bone from me, right? Yes. There you go. Yeah. See, you like it? Yeah, it's excited. We haven't even started talking about the article when you're excited. <laughs> Uh, Death Shadow, Dinosaur, Unearthed in Argentina. Don't you just love that From Death Argentina? Shadow. Death Shadow. Come on. <laughs> From Argentina? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Because you, know, uh, you, yeah. know, you know that Brazil and Argentina, we don't get along well, right? Oh, really? No, we don't. Because they think they have the best soccer players. Oh, but we oh do. soccer players. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's correct. But they call it football down there, right? Or something. Or uh, e- yeah, football. Yeah. In Australia, uh-huh. they call football. it footy. Yeah. Footy? Just, they just shorten it even more. Yeah. Footy, oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But still, Death Shadow. I mean, that's a great name. Yeah. But that was pretty cool. All right. Mm-hmm. So we have Death Shadow here. Yeah. Um, the Death Shadow six ton giant. It was, I guess they're, they're saying the largest mega raptor on Earth to date. That's one mm-hmm. big dragon. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if you all can see in the image the little spots, white spots right there. You're going to strain people's eyes. That, that's, what, that's what was <laughs> really found. Um, yeah. It's the only thing that they found. In the in the in the dinosaur. Yeah, they said little bits of rib, mm-hmm. hip, tail, and arm, and that's pretty much it. Right? So not a whole lot. And here we have no. another another image that shows you just a little bit of what's been found here. Yeah. Um, so in case in, in case you guys are wondering, you know, it's it's when they find these fossils, they don't find the entire structure, right? They don't find like the head, the arms, and everything like that. Right. Usually, you always kind of find these bits and pieces, and there has uh-huh. to be a lot of assumptions, a lot of uh, kind of guesswork that goes into it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these fossils are what we, we call that disarticulated. Right, disarticulated. Uh, they're, they're kind of, uh-huh. and here's a piece, here's a piece. And Let's, sometimes yeah. associated because sometimes they find something, but they're so dispersed that they can just call associated because they're not very, they, mm-hmm. they assume they're the same thing, but they're just associated just around the area, which, is, can, which can be very subjective because mm-hmm. it can be how, how close it's associate, you know? So there's a lot of assumptions, as Rob was saying mm-hmm. there. But it's just funny because it says that it has 9 to 10 meters in length, which is, that is 30 feet. Yeah, about 32 right? feet, yeah, or so, yeah. Yeah, 30 feet. So the thing is huge. And look at the, for the light. ones that were here when I was speaking, um, look at that. You know, it's just interesting to see. Uh, of course, they can kind of maybe uh, get some estimates, maybe get but some uh, ideas. But I think it's just they. I think that they stretch so much sometimes that yeah. it just uh, mm-hmm. yeah. And, well, and, and you, you notice a lot when you ever <laughs> have these dinosaur articles. There's always uh-huh. that evolutionary bias that dinosaurs turned into birds, like we were talking right. about. Mm-hmm. And so they always say like the talons on this megaraptor, right? Talons to trying to get you to think about okay, birds, birds, dinosaurs, birds. Mm-hmm. So they have talons, you know. So you kind of have to watch out for those all the way through and uh-huh. through. They kind of just right. sprinkle that in. Yeah, the um, people who can spot that are talented. Exactly. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you got to catch up from the last yeah. episode. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me is they say it's a six-ton giant. Mm-hmm. But how do they actually measure? I mean, you, you find yeah. some bones. Hey, it was six tons. I mean, so there's a lot of guesswork in that. And one of the things they do is they try to figure out the, the overall size of it based on these sizes. And mm-hmm. I, I understand mm-hmm. that. But then how much mass is really there? Right. Uh, for a long time, you go back to the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, and people were, were they, they wanted these big, heavy dinosaurs. So they were actually using ma- mammalian calculations to try to put all this mass on them. Uh, about 10, 15 years ago now, some people started saying, hey, why are we using m- mammal mass on this? These things were reptiles. You know, maybe we should uh, adjust this, make it more streamlined around the bodies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I doubt that they're using any of that kind of stuff now. I know that was mm-hmm. just some group saying, hey, maybe we should be doing this. Uh, but I always thought it was interesting when people would start streamlining these a little bit more. They actually look more like dragons mm-hmm. than these big, thick, heavy, slow-moving looking dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. So I wonder how I And, and I want to mention that uh, Bodhi uh, yesterday, he asked me to check something. So he, checked, he asked me to check mm-hmm. uh, the Bible in Portuguese, the version of 1860. I'm just not fluent. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. No, 1860. Not. And then to check some of the verses, there was like maybe 20 to 30 verses that talk about dragons. The Bible talks about mm-hmm. dragons. To see what is the, 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 in Portuguese, if they were using dragon or uh, jerko- jackal. Yeah. Jackal. Yeah. yeah. And then I was checking all of them and they had dragon, which is very, very interesting yeah. because when you go and see the version today, they don't have dragons in a lot of them. Right. They pulled 
dragon out and they've replaced it with right, jackal. Right, they replaced a jackal. And yeah. that started to happen in a lot of our English translations, German translations yeah. I was able to look up. Um, you know, for you know, 1800 years, people would use dragon. Suddenly they stopped using dragon because and people think dragons were a myth. Right. Um, where you One know, person thought yeah. that, right? Yeah, one and person changed. thought it and has influenced mm-hmm. a lot of the scholarship on that. Uh, yeah. uh, he was the one who actually translated the uh, Septuagint, Septuagint uh-huh. in the 1840s. So that kind of switched all that because he thought, well, they were a myth. But see, dragon's the old word that would have included creatures like dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Dinosaur is a new word. Right. Uh, 1841 is when it was first invented. Mm-hmm. And it means terrifying or terrible lizard. It makes you wonder if it, when they start digging these bones out, if they just called them dragon bones, there probably wouldn't be a controversy over it. Uh-huh. Nobody would have thought twice about yeah. it. But right. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't be such hot stuff. Yeah. So. Fire beating dragons, hot stuff. Oh, come on. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one uh, Manitoba's first medically assisted death in a church was an intimate ceremony. Yeah, that's, that's a real article, by the way, guys. Said. Very, very, sad. very, very, very sad. sad. Uh, this is human sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's it's not, just let's not church. it. Let's not use the euphemisms like they're trying to say medically assisted death. No, this is human sacrifice. This is murder at its simplest right mm-hmm. here. And this is just another evidence that we're living in a culture of death right now. And it reminds me of Proverbs that those who hate God ultimately love death. And that's what we're seeing here. But this is a church in Canada. And I just mm-hmm. keep thinking, what, what, what in the world's going on in Canada today? It's just, you're seeing all these churches just compromising more and more on different mm-hmm. things. You see, even this church as well, if you go onto their website, you can see that they are affirming of the LGBT ideology and the sexual ethics and a lot of other uh, compromised positions, of course, that they don't hold to any kind of biblical orthodoxy in any way, shape, or form. So it's really no kind of, um, surprise I, I guess you can say but mm-hmm. so apparently this this lady she had ALS um, if you guys are familiar with that disease it's a nervous system disease which is a very serious disease yeah. of course but it's mm-hmm. not worthy of death right it's it's, it's not nothing worthy of is death. until God yeah. calls exactly, us right exactly and 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 what, what what got me is that she actually went to the leadership of the church and she was trying to seek help and as a church leadership, you don't just say, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and sentence you to die. No, you actually come around that person. You actually help them. You give mm-hmm. them biblical counseling and, and, and whatever mm-hmm. it is that maybe has those thoughts to kind of go around in their head. You get them the proper and, treatment and care. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. So it just, yeah, I mean, just reminds me that the Bible is very clear that there will be a day of judgment coming. And anyone that holds yeah. a pastor kind of position, that judgment is going to be teaching, worse. Teaching, yeah. Yeah, if you have a teaching position. So I just... Just pray for them. Yes, um, says here that, that they repent. And the decision to end her life was not an easy one. She grappled with her faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really sad. Yeah, yeah. and it, it says here also that um, it says like she could choose to leave this world on her own terms. Here, it's her ideas higher than God's idea. Yeah, it's that's her classic time. Humanism, right there. It's her time higher than God's time. It's her. Um, uh, plans higher than right. God's plans. It's, it's just right here, and yeah. it's just sad to see because, of course, as a disease, it's it's a it's a hard, very hard disease. But mm-hmm. there's nothing, there's nothing. We, our days are counted by God. You know, mm-hmm. we are mm-hmm. we are not here in vain. We are not here by mm-hmm. chance. God has a plan. Mm-hmm. Ha- God has put us because of Him for His glory mm-hmm. through. Him, we are here, and we see, and I have, I know someone uh, from actually from my church in Brazil that she has the same thing. She has struggled for so many years, but she's a woman of joy, of love, of worship, and she's strong in her faith, and every single time that I think about something hard, I think of her and the way that she acts gives me hope too because she's, she's a, a Christian. Yeah. She's a good example. She's a reference, you know, that I can look at and be like, okay, God, you know, uh, strength me the way that you have been doing with her. Yeah. There's another lady too. Uh, she, she has cancer and she's only 30 years old and she just found out that she has cancer in her body, the whole body. And she's from Brazil too. And she, I follow her on Instagram and, and I just love her. Uh, the way that she talks about it, how, how much I have blessed, how many people, thousands of people have been blessed by the way that she's dealing with mm-hmm. that, you know, in a Christian way. And then we mm-hmm. see here, 
just the opposite. It's, it's sad and very, very sad to yeah. see things mm -hmm. like that and how much we can learn I mean, from at, this. Look yeah. at godly examples in the Bible. You know, when David was approaching death, he didn't say, oh, come poison me. Right. You know, Jacob didn't do that. Jesus on the cross didn't right. do that. That's right. Um, you know, it, it shows the sanctity of life all the mm -hmm. way up to the moment of death. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's the biblical worldview that we can actually say why life is precious, why life right. is deserving. Mm -hmm. It's because life all life is made in the image of God, and mm -hmm. that's why we need to be Comes continuing. From exactly, and so really, this should also remind us that there's a battle between two religions happening. Like Gabby was saying, you know, basically they're they're saying that as a human being, your voice and your choices are what matter in the end. They're elevating their own mm -hmm. thoughts and opinions to supersede God's truth, right? So this is secular humanism. This is man's word versus God's truth, right here. So we have to and remember. And it's infiltrated in, in, in a church. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. They have traded the truth about what God says for the lie of the culture, and that's that's what's happened, like in Romans mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Said. All right. Yep. Let's move on to uh, evolution news. Transhumanism is pure eugenics. Okay, there's a lot of big words in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's break that in the English there. Yeah, uh, transhumanism is, uh, humanism is a religion, and uh, transhumanism is basically try to move up to that next evolutionary phase uh, of humanity. And then eugenics is actively trying to remove people from the population that you don't want and trying to evolve to the next, it's kind of like trying to breed a master race, kind of like mm -hmm. what uh, Adolf Hitler was trying Hitler to do. Did, Eugenics yeah. was alive very much so in the United States back in the past, and mm -hmm. to a certain degree, it's still here. Right. And that's kind of what this is talking about, yeah. the evolutionary influence. And, the, and, and yeah. there, as you said, the whole base of this is evolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the idea of getting things better, uh, and the things that are not as good, mm -hmm. we should eliminate them. That's definitely what is the idea. Mm -hmm. Transhumanism is not something new. It has been here for a long, for a long time, time, but mm -hmm. just change the word. Right. That's the, yeah. because it's pure eogenics. Yeah. It's totally eugenics. Mm -hmm. It's just trying to destroy the ones that they understand as weak mm -hmm. and uh, it's a burden for yeah. them and try to master uh, the, the, some others groups. Yeah, and, and just so people know, uh, Evolution News is not an evolutionary website. Uh, they actually right. oppose evolution. Uh, which is kind of nice, being able to read through an article that's got a little bit better worldview, right. uh, understanding yeah. mm -hmm. these types of things. But one of the things that's pointing out is uh, Israeli philosophy professor uh, Harari is one of the movement's chief proselytizers. And one of the things that he says is, and this is what the article says, he believes that an AI, that is artificial intelligence, uh, human hybrids are inevitably going to take over. I think Terminators, right? I guess. <laughs> yeah, or Star Trek, things like well, that. Yeah, I that's the too problem. Many oh. movies. That's why I don't watch Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Star Wars yeah. all the way, right? Yeah, no, yeah. not that no. too. <laughs> but no, it's interesting. Uh, you know, they go on to point out, uh, you know, life is more nihilistic. Basically, it has no meaning. There is mm -hmm. no purpose, and everything's ultimately worthless. You know, that's humanism. And right. And, it's and that yeah. is the consequence state. of the evolutionary worldview. Right. It's, it's like, like Abby was saying, if we're just matter in motion, we're just, you know, bags of, of meat or whatever they say, bags of mo mostly water kind of bobbing around in the chaotic universe, then what meaning is there right. really? Right. So it's, that's a, it's a worldview without God. Yeah, exactly. Here mm -hmm. is someone that doesn't understand the value of life because we bear God's image. We don't, they mm -hmm. understand God's plans, God's mm -hmm. time, you know, God's glory because we are here for his glory. We mm -hmm. are here for his mm -hmm. glory. And that's the main point. When you take yeah. all that away, you have nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Mm -hmm. It's just meaningless, useless, as some of the words that he's using mm -hmm. here. And yeah, that's when you you judge things based on human, man's word and not God's word. That's why there's only two ways, God's word or man's word. Right. Don't get me wrong, there, there's some unique aspects of AI and when used properly, I think can be put to a good purpose. But we do really have to be very careful and be discerning about some of this stuff and some of the angles and the thrusts that the mm -hmm. secular world wants to take people, so. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on. This one comes from the Christian Post. Uh, Students for Life of America kicked off TikTok for posting life-affirming content. Boy, this is almost like a news item every day, right? Yeah. People yep. are being kicked All off the time. of yeah. uh, different social media sites because they support life or they support Christianity. Yeah, this happens a lot. Uh, and so forth. I mean, we see one after the other mm -hmm. after the other. And yeah. 
Uh, this is just another one of those examples. You know, they posted a video of an interaction between somebody who was pro-abortion and pro-life, and mm -hmm. uh, the pro-life person did a very good job, actually, mm -hmm. and they didn't like that. So you guys are now banned mm -hmm. <laughs> from yeah. TikTok. Now. Yeah, if you guys are familiar with TikTok at all, I, I downloaded it the other day. It was the worst decision of my life, by the <laughs> way. It's, I, I don't know how, how kids I don't have a TikTok. I don't, I don't can, even know what TikTok it. is. You guys probably, yeah, some people are probably, they're like, what are you talking about? Why yeah. are we talking about clocks here? Is this clocks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just... Um, Ultimately, it's it's like like Bodhi was saying, it's it's the pro-abortion, pro-death community. We don't say pro-choice, by the way, because it's not a choice. It's never a choice to murder an innocent child. Of course, we never want to use the euphemisms, the vernacular. Right. We're gonna call what community. it is. We call it what it is, right? So the pro-death yeah, community, they're basically just losing what's left in their depraved mind right now with all of the recent news that's happening. You're seeing it yeah. all over TikTok, and if you go against their agenda, you're automatically being banned from all these different social mm -hmm. media. It's not just TikTok; it's YouTube and, tw Facebook. and Facebook. Hopefully, not Twitter. Moving forward, we'll. We'll yeah. see now, now with the latest news for that, but ultimately it's, it's, it's a worldview that doesn't have a basis for logic, right? So um, th that's why when this pro-life person was arguing with the pro-abort, trying to use logic, they didn't have an answer for it because they couldn't have right, anything to stand on as well. Yeah. Um, and this is just a reminder that, you know, this whole thing of abortion, it's, it's not a cultural issue, it's not a political issue, it's not even a logical or scientific issue, right? This is a spiritual, this is a worldview right. battle. It's a right sin issue, yeah. This yeah. is a sin issue. So. At, at the same time, I look at these kind of articles and I think that's great. These kind of organizations are standing up for the preborn, of course, but the problem is they're relying solely and completely on science and embryology and, you know, maybe using logical arguments, mm -hmm. but ultimately that's not going to change the heart because that's really the heart of the problem yeah. is the problem of the heart, right? right. So a lot of these pro-aborts, these pro-death people, they have a conscience, which means with knowledge. Con means with, sign means, means knowledge. Romans 2 says, God's law is written on all of our hearts. So these mm -hmm. pro boards, they already know murdering an innocent children, child is wrong, yet they think that they can still do it anyways. Right, they're trying to justify, they're trying to suppress right, that. They suppress the truth, it. Yeah. And yeah. it just shows us that our hearts, all of our hearts are deceitful and wicked. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. we need the gospel to be able to fight this issue, to have our mm -hmm. hearts of stone transformed into a heart of flesh. And that's what we need to focus on right. the when we're battling this kind of issue. Yeah. I know, and time is running out. It's like tick tock. Tick tock, yeah. Do we have any time? <laughs> we have time to go over the last one? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, this comes from Forbes. Creationism versus evolution has been roiling education for a century. What, we, what can we learn from the debate? Now I want you to notice a fallacy right up front. Yep. Creationism yep. versus evolution. Yep. Ooh. Now, that, that's actually a fallacy right yep. there. Right. Uh, you know, why didn't they do creationism versus evolutionism? Or mm -hmm. creation versus evolutionism? Yeah. Yeah. See, they're trying to... Question begging right. It's a question begging epithet, epithet, epithet right. fallacy, what yep. they're doing right up front, uh, even in the title here. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is actually looking at a book uh, where they're really uh, attacking creation. And you know, su suggesting, hey, you know, we should all be uh, learning uh, evolution, and and we shouldn't have religion in the classroom except for evolution. <laughs> um, you know, that is a religion. That's really what they're trying to teach yeah. when you read through it all. Christianity, replacing it with another religion. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and see, a lot of people don't realize that an evolutionary worldview is part and parcel a of the religion of secular humanism or mm -hmm. naturalism, nature right. is all that there is. Evolution is an outworking of that. It's a tenet of that particular religion. So when you see that in a classroom, you are being taught a religion. That's right. mm -hmm. When I grew up, I went to state schools from kindergarten to college, and I was taught an evolutionary worldview left, right, and center, and yet I was over and over again, I was told, oh, we're not teaching you religion. Mm -hmm. And they were teaching me religion that absolutely opposed God and his word. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a new religion. Evolution's been around since the uh, Epicureans, maybe even mm -hmm. before. The Epicureans and the Stoics were arguing against Paul in Acts chapter 17. Epicureans believed evolution. It mm -hmm. largely died for a long time. It was revived in France by Lamarck and Charles Darwin's grandfather, Erasmus, wrote a book on Lamarckian evolution mm -hmm. and then Charles Darwin. You know, so there is a long line of this, but it is a religious viewpoint, a worldview that absolutely opposes a Christian worldview. Yeah. And they yeah. agree in here that it's a religion. Boy, I'm just talking and talking. <laughs> uh, Get off you your know, soapbox. Come on. Yeah, man. they said, uh, uh, just as evolution came to stand for a certain way of seeing the world, they admit world right there, view. it's a worldview. World yeah. Which a worldview is religious. Right. They agree it. Yeah. yeah. So, right yeah. off the bat. 
And then, yeah, you, you even see the bias throughout here. They say, what some creationists worry about is not that their children will learn science. So automatically, they're equivocating on the word science to mean evolution. Yep. But right. if you've been involved with our ministry at all for any number of years, it's, we, there's, a, there's two different sciences here. We have observational, observable facts that we can test, repeat in the present versus historical science. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really just a, kind of a form of storytelling. But they're trying to say that this is science. Anything yeah. else is yeah. not basically is what right. they're saying and so obviously it just reminds us that they're they're not neutral neutrality no. is a myth of course mm -hmm. and so they're they're basically saying that we should try to keep religion out of the schools and and just focus on the science but there is no neutrality yeah but when they say science what they say they're not saying knowledge they're saying evolution yeah, focus right. on science they say focus on right. evolution yep. exactly yeah. right all right, I want to recommend a couple of resources here. We have Glasshouse, which really deals with an evolutionary worldview. A lot of the arguments, natural selection, mutations, uh, are humans and chimps 98% similar, chromosome two fusion. If you know kids in high school or college, definitely got to get this in your hands. Yeah. If you just want to deal with a lot of the evolutionary arguments, that's what you want, Glasshouse. And then we've dealt with a lot of dinosaurs in here. I'm going to recommend one of the kids' books. Uh, this is Dinosaurs of Eden by Ken Ham. Absolutely wonderful book. Uh, the artwork is brilliant. Kids love it. And I'll mm -hmm. be honest, even adults I was love say, it. Not just kids, but <laughs> so, uh, too. It really Parents is neat. Too. Uh, we also have uh, Faith Country Music uh, Festival coming up at the Ark Encounter, June 16 through 18. You can find out more about that at uh, arkencounter.com slash country. And uh, we also have uh, 40 Days and Nights of Gospel Music, uh, August 2nd through September 10. So uh, 40 days of it. So you got to pick your day, see who's uh, playing and, and see, see what you want to do. We yeah. did this last yeah. year. It was hugely successful, so I want to encourage yeah, people to consider this again. But we're out of time, and uh, we just thank everyone uh, for coming. Thanks uh, for you watching uh, uh, out there on the Internet, all around the world. Uh, God bless you all, and uh, we wish you the best. God bless.